So I'm going to hit the record button. Okay. Hey, everybody. Sorry for the really weird uh, conditions that we're in right now. Uh, talking with some people before we started this, it sounds like so far the weekend's been going really well and that the other professors have done a great job with Zoom. This right now, what we're on is an optional meeting. Our official Zoom session is going to start at 1.30. And at 1.30, um, I have some data and some statistics that a contact of mine from JP Morgan sent me. Uh, the JP Morgan Emerging Markets, Emerging Markets Research Team put out their latest research on coronavirus. So at 1.30, I'm going to show you just a few slides from that just to give you the latest on what JP Morgan is saying. We'll go over the Dixon case. And then we'll also go over this uh, in-class lab on relevant cash flows. So if we were together, what we would have done is start with Dixon case. Then I would have broke you out for about an hour to work on this in-class lab on relevant cash flows. But just given all the circumstances, what I want to do is give you some guidance on this in-class lab, give you the next like hour and 15 minutes to just work on it. And then we'll just come back together at 1.30 and go over everything is my plan. So let me, let me pull up real quickly here. Sorry. So everybody should have the link. It's on both Learning Suite and I just emailed it to you. Uh, can everybody see on your screen this relevant cash flows rental property case study? Can I just get a thumbs up if, if people are seeing that on your screens? Sweet. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Kevin. All right. We're going to read through this together. Then I'm going to show you the spreadsheet and then I'll launch you on it. So setting the stage. You, and I want to remind you, this is meant to be practice on the relevant cash flows lecture that you should have already watched on video. And I hope that that was helpful to clarify some things, but this is a chance to practice that. Okay, you own a half acre of land in Utah Valley. You paid $30,000 for this lot 10 years ago and have been paying the taxes and holding the land ever since. You are prepared to either sell or develop the lot. Your best guess is that you could sell the lot for $100,000 right now. Uh, I hope you can see that right away I'm trying to get you thinking about what cash flows should be in and what cash flows should be out. Uh, before we got going, by the way, some of your classmates were helping coach me on Zoom, which I appreciate. Um, what I was told is at any point, one of you can hit the space bar and unmute yourself and talk. Uh, I, would, I would request that we all mute ourselves if you're not talking just so we don't have a lot of background noise. But I am going to start asking some questions, so feel free to unmute yourself and offer an answer. Um, so just right away, you paid $30,000 for the lot 10 years ago, you're thinking about developing it, or you're going to sell it. So you could sell it for $100,000 right now. So does anybody see a cash flow there that's not going to be in your analysis? And why would it not be in your analysis? 30,000 bucks. It's a sunk cost. Perfect. Mark, $30,000 is a sunk cost. So that's not going to be in your analysis. Just a little bit of a hint. Okay. Your development plan is to build, and I apologize if these numbers are not realistic. I'm worried that some of the real estate gurus in the class are going to start like scoffing and mocking at my case because the, the numbers might not be realistic, but just, just bear with me. So your development plan is to build a residential home with the intent to hold it as a rental property. You estimate you could build a five bedroom, three bathroom home for 225,000. That represents the total cost, uh, materials, labor, permits, everything all in. You believe that the value of the home and the land, which right now the land is valued at $100,000, you're going to spend $225,000 to develop it potentially if it makes sense. You believe that that $325,000 uh, value right now will appreciate at an annual rate of 3%. Your plan is to sell the home after 30 years. And I want you to assume that any point, if there's any sale, whether it's land or a home, let's assume 7% selling costs on everything. Further, uh, federal tax law directs you to depreciate the value of the home, not the land, over 27 and a half years using a straight, straight line depreciation method. If and when you sell the home, you would likely face two tax charges. Uh, by the way, I did consult with our real estate expert here in my department. So this was um, current as of a few years ago when I talked to him, he helped me develop this. So assuming the sales price exceeds the original value of the property, you would have to pay a 25% recapture tax on any depreciation recorded up to that point, right? So you're going to depreciate uh, the value of the property, not the land. But then when you sell it, if the sales price exceeds that initial value, then you have to recapture some tax on the depreciation. That's what we're talking about there, this 25% recapture tax 
on any depreciation recorded up to the point of the sale. Uh, additionally, you would pay capital gains. We're going to assume that's 15% on the difference between the sales price, net of cost to sell, and the original cost basis of the property plus improvements. Uh, is that number right? No, that should be 225. Sorry. Okay. You estimate you'll need to pay $25,000 at the end of the 20th year for a new roof. Assume that this $25,000 adds to the cost basis and will be depreciated over 27 and a half years. Uh, let's assume that the new roof has no impact on the market value of the home. If you decide to develop the home, you plan to put 25% of the cost down and finance the rest at an annual rate of 5% over 20 years. The loan would require monthly payments made at the end of each month, but to simplify our work, we will assume annual payments. Does anybody want to do the class a favor and jump in and make a comment about what you should do with that particular part of the case? You're supposed to just put down the, the price, right? Without the, don't worry about the interest rate. Thank you very much. That part of the case should just entirely be ignored, right? Hopefully if you watch the video, you learn that financing costs should not be included in your analysis. You should just instead take the initial investment regardless of how you're going to finance it. And that initial investment should be a year zero cash flow. So just trying to give you some hints to make this simpler here. Rental income. The rental market in your area has been reliable. You estimate you could rent out the home for $1,950 per month in the first year. You also believe rental prices will increase at an annual rate consistent with inflation. Let's assume 3%. You realize that rental properties are not always occupied and collecting rent can episodically be problematic. So you're going to make this estimate. You're going to estimate that the home will be occupied 11 out of 12 months on average and that you'll be able to collect on 90% of the rent owed to you. You have also decided, decided to hire a management firm that will charge you a 10% fee on all collected rents. Management firm has asked you to allocate $3,000 initially as net working capital, allowing them to take care of minor issues that need attention without having to request a check from you. They've also asked you to agree to put $1,500 per year which is their best guess at annual maintenance and repair costs into the working capital fund each year. This $1,500 annual requirement is expected to grow at 2% per year. So the amount you're gonna have to pay each year into this working capital fund is gonna grow at 2% per year. Maintenance cost funds will be depleted, but they anticipate that the $3,000 initial working capital infusion plus interest would be returned to you upon the sale of the home. So you're putting in 3,000. Every year you're gonna make a contribution to this. They're gonna to have to draw out of it periodically, but they think realistically at the end of this whole thing, you're gonna get the 3,000 back plus interest of about 50 basis points per year. Uh, thanks for hanging with me. We're almost to the end here. Your annual property tax rate of 1.3806% will be assessed against the total market value of the home, which will be adjusted annually, right? So that tax rate is gonna be multiplied against the market value of the home, which is gonna change every year. Uh, primary residences receive a 45% exemption, but since this will be a rental property, there will be no exemption. So the mill rate will be assessed against the entire value of the home. Rental income, net of management fees, property taxes, depreciation, et cetera, is taxed at ordinary rates. Your marginal tax rate is 25%. Note that interest payments each year are deductible for tax purposes. Assume this is an independent project, which means negative income cannot be used for tax purposes in the year that you incur the negative income, but it can be carried forward. Okay, so we're gonna assume a discount rate of 6.5% and your, your uh, task is to estimate the NPV of this project and the IRR. What I wanna do is just show you sort of the elements that you're gonna to have to work through here. So can everybody see my spreadsheet? Can I get a thumb up from somebody just to know you see my spreadsheet? Thank you, Kevin. All right, so I've got all the inputs right here and you're gonna give me an NPV and an IRR. And if you have time, modified IRR if necessary, don't stress out about that. I mostly want this NPV number. But let me, I'm gonna walk you sort of from the end back to the input sheet. 
So the very last tab, and, and please, I've created this template spreadsheet for you to help guide your analysis to steer you. So ultimately, you're going to have to create this spreadsheet. Uh, in year zero, there's not going to be any EBIT, right? Remember, free cash flows to the firm is operating cash flows minus net capital spending minus increases to net working capital. So that's what you ultimately need is operating cash flows, net capital spending, increases to net working capital. And the way you're going to get operating cash flows is EBIT minus taxes plus depreciation. So that's what I'm mapping out for you here is for the 30 years that you're going to rent this thing out, you need to figure out the EBIT the depreciation and the taxes. Ideally, the taxes will just be EBIT times whatever your tax rate is, which in this case is 25%. So this will be pretty straightforward once you map out your EBIT and your depreciation. Net capital spending will also be pretty straightforward. In period zero, it's gonna be the $225,000 to develop the property. And then you're gonna have the new roof, I think at year 20, which is, I said 25,000 if I remember right. Changes to net working capital, that's going to be the $3,000 initially. And then what we're going to assume is, now I know that every year you're having to make a contribution, but we're just going to assume that that contribution is actually being chewed up. So the only thing you have to worry about with net working capital is the initial $3,000 going in, and then at the end, you're going to get it back plus interest. So all you will have is a year zero and a year 30 on net working capital. Once you have operating cash flows, net capital spending, and increases to net working capital, you can calculate free cash flows to the firm. Then you just need to include the opportunity cost, but you have to be a little careful about the opportunity cost. Uh, on the opportunity cost, the opportunity cost would be, well, I can sell the land for $100,000 right now, but you have to take into consideration selling costs. You have to take into consideration um, taxes. So what we want is after-tax opportunity cost. So that's why I've got this little tab here for after-tax opportunity cost. So that, once you get that figured out, that would go right here in period zero. Uh, we also need to point out, I've created a tab for you. You might not even need this. This is just your beginning net working capital, annual interest rate, number of years, and then you can calculate what the ending net working capital that would be that's going to come back to you. Right? So that's these two tabs right here. We also need to realize that at the end of year 30, in terms of net capital spending, you're actually gonna get a big cash inflow at the end of year 30, because you're gonna sell the house. So there's a tab right here that's labeled savage, salvage value. This is where you're gonna figure out what your ending sales price would be. You gotta take out the selling costs. Selling costs. That's gonna give you your net sales price. Subtract out your original cost basis that's going to allow you to calculate your capital gains and your capital gains tax. Remember, you're also going to need to deal with this depreciation recapture. So any depreciation that you have recorded, you're going to have to pay a 25% recapture tax on that. So if you add together your cap gains and your recapture tax, that'll be your total tax. Then you'll be able to get your after-tax salvage value. That'll come back here to your free cash flows tab, and that's going to be a year 30 big positive on the capital spending side. Okay, the other big thing you're gonna need is EBIT and depreciation. So I've got a tab here for income projections. This is where you can map out what your gross rent is gonna be. Remember, you're starting out, if I remember right, you're starting out at, what was it, 1950 a month, right here. So that's your rental, uh, in, rental income per month in the first year, but remember, we're going to assume you only get that for 11 out of 12 months and you only collect on 90%. So that, and, and that's going to increase, right? We said that we would assume that this rental rate would increase at 3% per year. So in the first year, it's going to be 1950 per month times 11 months times 90%. Then that's going to grow at 3% each year for the next 30 years. Can I get a hallelujah, meaning a thumbs up that you're like, yeah, I get what you're talking about there with rental income. And Kevin's the only one on video. So Kevin, do you want to represent the class? Jared Rivera, Gail, Gail good. Gail, people are really great. Awesome. Uh, okay. So then management fee is just going to be 10% of collected rents. This maintenance fee is going to be that $1,500 in the first year, but then it's going to increase. I can't remember what we were increasing that at. I want to say 2%. Uh, 
Yeah, 2% per annum. So that $1,500 maintenance fee is going to increase at 2% per year. Was okay, that depreci- start with 3000 Say that again. The, the 3000 does that not go to the maintenance, that initial $3,000? we are not going to call that expense because the idea with that is you're just giving them the 3000 in the first year to give them a slush fund. Yeah, but yeah. they actually don't think they're going to need to dip into that. And we think at the end, you're going to get that back. So right. the 3000 is just Delta in networking capital. We're not going to call that maintenance expense. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, sweet. Uh, thanks for the question, by the way. All right, we got to talk about depreciation. But before we go there, let me walk you through the rest of this tab. Once you have depreciation and your property taxes, um, you'll be able to calculate earnings before interest and taxes. You'll be able to add in interest expense, although you actually won't need that, but we'll keep rolling forward here. So interest expense, once you subtract that out, you get earnings before taxes. In the first few years, it's gonna be negative. So what's gonna happen is those negative earnings are just gonna accumulate and you'll carry them forward. That's what I'm saying here is, here's your earnings before taxes, but you might have a giant negative carry forward that you can draw down on, right? So this is where you're gonna have the cumulative carry forward. This will be actually your post. Once you use that carry forward, this will actually be the amount of of income that you're gonna have to pay taxes on. So you'll calculate your taxes and that'll finally get you to net income. What you're gonna need from here mostly is this earnings before interest and taxes that column is going to carry over to your actual free cash flows to the firm. Okay, let's talk about property taxes. With property taxes, all you're going to need to do is grow the value of the property. Right at the beginning, it's going to be $100,000 of land, $225,000 of development. That's going to grow. If I remember right, we said that that would grow at about 3% per year. Uh, Yeah, so we said that this would appreciate an annual rate of 3%. So you're just gonna grow the value of this investment and then you're gonna assess your property tax rate against that. So you'll estimate your property taxes and then you'll put that onto your income projections tab. Okay, on the depreciation table, uh, you need to take into consideration two types of depreciation. The first one is the development of the house, $225,000. Depreciate that straight line over 27 and a half years. I'm just giving you the template right here, right? So what's the beginning book value? Straight line depreciation, add up the accumulated depreciation. That'll give you the ending book value. So you'll need to fill out this depreciation table. And then remember you're building the roof in year 20 and that's gonna cost you $25,000. And that's also gonna get depreciated over 27 and a half years. So you'll need to depreciate that here. So what I need you to see is from year 21 through year 27 and a half, you're gonna have both home and new roof depreciation. After year 27 and a half, you'll only have uh, roof depreciation. So that's what this table is over here is you can just add up these two different types of depreciation. Thumbs up, if that makes sense. Thank you, Davin. Thanks, Greg. Okay, it looks like people are groovy on this. All right, great. Also, I've got loan amortization table here. So you can actually, we did this during time value of money. You can fill in the loan if you want. You can amortize it, figure out what the interest expense is. So, okay, at this point, you pretty much have everything that you need to do the assignment. There is one little piece of nuance, but I don't really want to go over this nuance. I just want to launch you, let you work on it. So here's what we're going to do. You've got about an hour and five minutes. Um, I'm probably just going to stay here, stay at the desk, stay available. I'm sorry, I haven't set up the breakout sessions like Monty did, I apologize for that. But um, beforehand, Jason was saying that maybe you guys could use your own technology to collaborate with your teams. I highly recommend divide and conquer, right? Have somebody work on the depreciation table, have somebody do property taxes, have somebody do salvage value, have somebody do opportunity cost. If you divide and conquer in years past, this has taken groups about a half hour, but you've got about an hour to work on it. Are there any questions? And remember, once you get free cash flows to the firm, right over here in column K on the free cash flows tab, once you have those net cash flows, then I want you to calculate uh, NPV and IRR. And then I want you to tell me, I mean, the real question is, should I develop the land or should I just sell it right now for $100,000? Does everyone understand? Like that's the real world question we're dealing with. Should we develop it or just sell it right now? Okay, any questions before we just launch for about an hour and work on this thing independently? OK, 
Okay, you're all beautiful and amazing. Uh, good luck. I'll be here. I'll be available. If I step away from my computer, I promise I'll be I'll be right back. But go for it, and we'll come back together at one thirty. Hey, yeah.